Hey guys, this is Kyle Skelly with Innovating the Outdoors, and we're going to go over the Lynx arm. So the Lynx arm is a solid 6061 aluminum construction with a 3D printed standoff. The uh, arms, which there are three arms that extend out to about 28 and a half inches. Um, these are made out of three quarter inch uh, square stock 6061. The base is water jet out of 5 8 uh, 6061 plate. And the standoff is about three inches uh, wide by about an inch and a half deep. And that is printed out of uh, PETG. Uh, the strap is a polyester strap that helps with eliminating the uh, stretch in the strap. And then we have a 900 pound rated cam buckle with a 900 pound rated PV or a urethane coated uh, flat hook. This strap system is very similar to what we use in the Runt and the Titan if you're familiar with some of our other products. Uh, those are our bow hangers and those have been getting great feedback in the field. We also have a rubber or TPU bungee ball um, with a little pull tab. This just keeps the arms nice and compact so they're not gonna fly around in your bag. Just keeps everything real nice. So that's all included. The weight of this comes out to about two pounds, four or five ounces. Um, my scale's not too, too accurate. So that's roughly what I got on my scale. Um, the hole for the fluid head and the bolt is just a through hole. So you will see that the bolt will actually be um, separate it won't be attached to the camera arm. There's very good reasoning for that, guys. Um, what we found was the set screw, it's always so hard. Like if it's if it's something that you can't tighten with a wrench, it's so hard to get it tightened with the fluid head because you can only tighten the base of the fluid head so much before it'll start to spin on itself and not have enough friction to hold. So what we went with, which is definitely against the grain, is just a little three quarter inch by three eighths bolt, which will mount to uh, mostly every fluid head. And the fluid head that I'm using is uh, Ulanzi U190, I believe is the um, part number of this. We'll put this in the link of the video and then as well on the website. Um, so all you're gonna do is just put that bolt on, pass it up from the bottom side, and then just get it started with my fingers. And then I'm gonna grab a 9 16 inch wrench and I'm just gonna snug that up. It makes for a super, super secure system. That fluid head is on there. It's not going anywhere. I don't have to worry about, well, if I have this thumb screw down at the base, if I have it tightened too much, it's gonna back off in the middle of a, of, in the middle of a, uh, you know, a possible shot on a deer. Um, so we found that that system is what we prefer and that's what we're gonna roll with for right now. So I guess we'll just jump right into um, getting this on the tree. Again, you'll get everything pictured here with the exception of the fluid head. The fluid head is gonna be on you guys. Uh, the retail roughly for this, we're thinking right now like 225, 230. And again, that's getting you about 28 inches of reach. Uh, very stable with the standoff on the back and the strap system leveling bolt, little leveling bubble level, bullseye level on the back. Uh, so let's jump into this and we'll get some cutaways with some close-ups on this as well. So I'm just going to pop the bungee off the back and then start undoing my strap. These are all going to be set up to mount out of the box on the left-hand side of the tree if I'm facing the tree. If you want to flip the strap and you want to mount it onto the right-hand side of the tree, uh, watch our other video we have posted in the link and on the website as well of how to change the strap around. It's not, it's not really complicated, but we just want to put a video together so no, there was no confusion out in the field. So I'm just going to loosen my cam buckle up and just like I would with a stick with a rotating standoff, I'm going to level that out roughly. I like to take my leveling bolt basically flush with the back side of the uh, base here. Um, that allows me to get the most leverage on this. And I take out about 12 inches of strap through the cam buckle. And then I like to hold the arm underneath whenever I start this. This allows me to really manipulate this arm. If I'm holding it up here, I start to get into like awkward angles. So I hold the arm underneath. I have the cam buckle here. I will usually will hook that right onto my pinky. I reach around the tree, pick up my cam buckle, and just start loosening it around the tree. 
Now what I found to get this super secure is I actually like to have the camera arm mounted slightly above where the strap goes around the tree. So if this is level with the strap, I go just slightly up, maybe like an inch, two inches up, and then I hook my cam buckle in. And now I take all of the slack out of the cam buckle and you'll see that the strap kind of has a slight upward angle to it. Again, that allows me to get maximum leverage on this and tighten the system as tight as I possibly can. Next, what I'm gonna do, what I like to do is I like to swing my arm out just a little bit to the back side, and that allows me to get my hand on both of these two, the bottom arm and then the second arm up. It allows me to really grab that nice and gives me a nice handle to use as a lever. So again, we just are gonna make sure that our strap has all the slack out of it. And then we're just gonna pry down until we're level with the bubble. And then I don't even have to use the knob. The knob really is just cosmetic, honestly. So all I'm doing is I'm just finger tightening the bolt. And you'll keep going, then you'll contact the tree. And now I, we'll use the knob maybe a little bit here. Just keep put applying pressure to the bottom side there. And then I'm pretty close to level there. So we'll call that good. Now, what that standoff does is that allows the installation on the tree to be much easier. Uh, it gives me a nice three inch wide base here that I can mount that camera up against the tree. I'm not trying to fight this five eighths inch wide um, base here. I'm not trying to fight that on the tree and try and keep everything nice and tight. I like to keep all of my bolts pretty snug on this camera arm. Uh, that also will help you with installing it on the tree. If these bolts are loose, especially the one at the base, uh, this will want to tend to flop around real easily. Uh, now, once I'm on the tree here with my camera arm, I simply just grab the little pull tab on my bungee here, ease it off so I'm not making noise. Take this bungee ball, put it in your pocket, hang it on the, the knob of the camera, whatever you want to do with it. I prefer to put it in my pocket and now I'm ready to go. So we'll also show you another benefit here. Let me loosen up my fluid head. Another benefit of that three inch wide bracket there. When I come around on the weak side of the tree, what we noticed with a lot of camera arms is when you start to apply pressure and right now I'm probably, probably applying about 10, 12 pounds of pressure here and I'm not getting any kind of budge here with the base. I'm getting a little bit of flex with the bracket, but this is staying very stable. So when I have my camera, if I'm saddle hunting and I have my camera over here on a weak side shot, I don't have to worry about this kicking out and my camera just laying there. This, this allows for a nice sturdy base, allows me to come around the tree, manipulate around the tree very easily. And like I said, when you have these, like, these bolts snugged up to the point where I can still easily bend them, it really allows for a nice, fluid movement with hardly any bounce out on the end of it. So even when I get the whole way out on the end of it, again, I'm applying a pretty decent amount of pressure to that arm and I'm not really getting anything. We'll cut away with some, uh, some more close-ups of that, but uh, let's just go over taking it off the tree. So again, I'll fold my arms back. And then the first thing I like to do, I'll tighten actually my fluid head at the base there. Um, that helps again so this doesn't flop around and I'm just going to install my bungee. So I'm going to come up over. I like to come under with the bungee with the uh, bungee ball itself so I'll come under the arm and then I have my pool tab on the top and I just hold that like I don't like you're smoking a cigar or a cigarette or whatever. Just hold it like that and then I just pass that bungee right over. Dress it up a little bit if it bothers you. And then again I'm gonna do the exact same thing in reverse order. So I'm gonna swing that top arm back. Gives me my nice handle for me to grab on with my hand. I'm gonna apply pressure down and I'm gonna to start to take pressure off the bolt. So I'm gonna loosen the leveling bolt. So as I do that, I get it to a point, again, now I'm just finger loosening the bolt at this point. And I just like to take it the whole way out at this point, just applying pressure. That takes all the pressure off the cam buckle. Now the, um, the gate on the cam buckle or the uh, button on the cam buckle has no pressure on it. It's very easy for me to undo. Now, when I'm wrapping up, I'm just gonna grab, hook my cam buckle on there. 
and I just pull all the slack out of it. Rotate my standoff. And then just like we showed in our other video of the strap installation, how to wrap this up, I come across the back of the cam buckle, one pass over as I'm coming around the backside up across the top of the base. I keep my strap right up against the base where the base and the bolt meet. And I'm gonna use the leveling bolt and the bolt head on the bottom as basically my guidelines to wrap this strap up. And it'll wrap up if you do it right, really nice. You make maybe about five or six passes and then you'll take your bungee. Your bungee will come ac across the front and then you'll just hook it real nicely onto the leveling bolt. And that's my camera arm. Um, so it really is extremely, extremely compact. This is going to fit very easily into a side pocket on your bag, laying flat at the bottom of your bag. However you really want this to sit, it's going to sit very nicely for you. So thanks guys, we appreciate it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.